Yes, yeah, so as far as that, we're concerned, the, the indications would be where you, you have clear uh, superficial fascial dysfunction. So that's that could could occur on the superficial layers of the of the spine, particularly. It's where I'd use it all the time. Certainly in relation to the upper traps and levator the scapula. There's no no reason why we can't. I mean, certainly we can we can just put the cup in and just leave it there as in a static position to to let it just do its its fascial drawing, if you like. But uh, the same token, we can uh, we can also slide that across those superficial layers to get a greater area of, uh, of tissue worked on in a short amount of time. We can also get the patient to, to go through range. So we actually hold the, hold the cup in a specific place and then say it's a hamstring, we might, we might place the, the cup in the central part of the, the biceps femoris where we've got a clear uh, degree of, of fascial dysfunction and then take the knee from a position of 90 degrees of flexion and then just take that into extension, keeping the, keep taking the, the knee into extension, keeping the cup still and we start getting some really great fascial layer mobilization. So it's not not just the, the superficial layers, but we also start getting into the into the deeper layers as well. And it becomes very functional that way as, as well. So so indications I would use it all the time on um, on the anterior thigh, on the um, on the hamstrings, on especially the spine, the upper traps, and levata scapula. But we use the cup itself, and we'll show this in the in the class itself that the cup. Is has got a lovely smooth um, surface, and that smooth surface is a is a brilliant tool for uh, treating even more finer points. So, for example, if we've got compartment syndrome of the of the anterior or the the lateral compartment of the lower leg, then we can use the cups without even any vacuum, just using the, the smooth edge of the cup to to create some really great fascial um, mobility with those. They're also brilliant for the forearms. So if we've got anyone that's, that's got really chronically shortened, say, extensor myofascia in the forearms, that we can just use the, the cup itself without vacuum to create great myofascial or restore great myofascial mo uh, mobility. As far as, as uh, contraindications, and we've got to be careful about people that are, that are on uh, blood thinning medications, and it's not a complete contraindication, but something that we go very, very conservatively with until we get a good feel about how they react. Some people, would, you might just decide, no, they, they, we've, they've already arrived with lots of bruises there. We just know that they bruise very, very easily with the smallest amount of contact on that patient. You wouldn't use it at all. But other patients um, that don't have that same reaction on blood thinning medications could be used. Things like pregnancy, where obviously we've, uh, the female body is um, is secreting hormones that are capable of um, extending the the fascial system. So therefore, it, when you put cups on somebody who's pregnant, you might um, you might get a, a less than um, optimal reaction because their body's going to react in a much more uh, quicker way to the cups. That sort of force. So. I wouldn't recommend it's used in uh, in somebody who's pregnant, uh, and and also to the delicate parts of the body. You know, and the thing is too, we we just see this a lot that people get. It happened to me when I was learning cupping, and I was really disappointed in a way that my initial instructors sometimes were okay. There's a bunch of cups, and there's a bunch of bodies. Just go and and cup, and but you say, well, let's you know, where where do we? Is there any problems with that? No, 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 no. Just, just go and do it. And, and I think that's really, really bad instruction. And but unfortunately, we see that over and over again. We get patients coming in with cups in uh, in just ridiculous places. That you've got to palpate first. Why on earth would you use a cup on an area when you palpate it already has got great fascial mobility? It just makes no sense to me at all. And create just because I've got I've got pain there. Somebody says, oh, let's get a cup and put a cup over that. That point, just because there's pain there, well, that's such a such a silly degree of, of clinical logic, if you ask me. That a cup is there to mobilise restricted myofascial tissue. So obviously, you've got to do an assessment of range of motion and palpation to determine if the cup is required even in the first place. So those are a couple of the things. We'll go certainly, Jeff. will go in a lot more detail in the, you know, when and and when not to use cupping in the seminar. But those are a couple of ideas that I think are, are really important.